Hi, today's demonstration is uh, on the rendering capabilities of uh, PTC CoCreate modeling solution. The, uh, the rendering capabilities are part of the base product, so it's not an add-on module. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is I've taken this uh, sample rolling chassis of a motorbike uh, and I'll just show you how to switch the rendering on applications, modules, and there's a rendering option here in the base modules. Okay, so let's just turn that on. You also have the option uh, to add it to your startup list so that the rendering is always available. Okay, so what we'll see now is we have this extra tab down the bottom. Here we have our structure browser, and there's a rendering tab now. Okay. Now what I've done is I've created a few configurations so I can just zoom into the area that I want to uh, render. Okay, and there are four options here. Uh, scenes, so you can set the scene, foregrounds, backgrounds, uh, etc. Or, or choose some scenery, uh, room scenery, etc. And you can build your own. Okay, uh, you can also adjust light sources and change the type of light. Uh, incandescent mercury vapor etc so materials which is the bit that we're really interested in uh, it comes with a standard library uh, of materials and uh, what I want to do is I want to go into the metals and aluminium so I'm just going to say that the cast aluminium okay uh, is what I'm after. Uh, in fact, I'm going to choose this one, cast aluminium, and literally you can just drag and drop it onto the model. Now, if I just do a preview, a render preview on this, uh, you'll see that this casting is probably a bit coarse for what I want. Okay, it'll probably be a little bit finer than that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own library. If you're working with standard materials, it's probably easier to create your own quick list. So new entry, new directory. And I can see that I have a new directory. I'm going to rename it. And just so it appears at the top of the list, I'm going to call it 00-my-materials. OK, so at the top of our list now, we've got a directory called My Materials. And if I if I look down at my cast aluminium, I can right click and take a copy and I'm going to paste it. So I now have my own copy of this material. What you can also do here is you can edit the material properties. So I'm going to um, adjust the scale. So you've got this preview here on this ball and I'm going to just turn the wheel so that I've got a, a much finer material. If I now drag and drop this onto my model and do a, a render preview, you can see that it looks more, much more like what a, uh, an engine casing casting would be. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a few machine faces. So if this was a, a cast aluminium and you know, this might or may not be the case, it's purely for demonstration. I could take the machined aluminium here and I could say right click apply to model. So rather than applying it to the whole part, I'm going to only apply it to faces. There's also um, uh, an option here for instance or base. If you apply a render to the base of the part and save it away, then that render information will stay with the part and will appear wherever you use that part in assemblies. Uh, if you apply it to the instance, then it will change the rendering of the part relative to the uh, context of the assembly that it's currently in. Okay, now I'm going to apply it to faces. I'm going to hold the shift key down because I'm going to select multiple faces. Okay. So if these faces had been machined because there are bolts going through them or something along those lines. Okay, and then accept. Uh, okay, if I just zoom in and just do a, here we go, here we go. Uh, do a quick render. If I look in the open space there, in fact, I'm in a command. Let me get out of the command. And I've got a right click render in the open viewport. 
uh, it's not particularly clear but you'll see that these faces are shown now as machined and not cast so you can you know you can get as detailed as you want basically now I'm going to jump back to my uh, the view that I wanted and let's apply a few more uh, rendered materials I'm currently in aluminium let's just go for something that's going to make it look nice and pretty gold polished gold drag drop so very very quick and easy um, okay we're we'll finished with the gold let's go down and say oh something nice and shiny I don't know silver no nickel polished nickel let's drop it on the spring okay now I'm gonna move out of metals because I want industrial coatings uh, let's say paint metallic paint and we'll go for a light blue we're going to drop it on the, the body there okay so I'm not going to apply any more materials because that's going to give us a, a rough idea of what we're looking at and I'm just going to choose to render and preview what I've done so it's real quick and easy uh, rendering uh, uh, historically used to be something that you'd have to set it running and go away for a couple of hours while it did its uh, uh, screen, you know, its its generation, etc. But these days it's pretty much instantaneous, and you can see it looks, you know, pretty nice. Um, I've got a few samples here, so let me just close that down. Okay, go back into my structure browser. Um, I'm going to go into my full render view. So what I've done here, purely just to make it look nice, is I've created this shape around the outside of my subject. Um, and if I if I zoom into my render view, okay, and then do a in fact, let's remove the draw list, and I do a render. you can see that it gives this nice effect it's a bit you know a bit arty and a bit fancy but um, some people are going to want those kind of results so that's just achieved by creating a curved surface uh, behind the subject and a flat surface underneath which I think is pretty nice okay that's it pretty much for rendering it's it's straightforward I don't believe it needs any training you just get in and find your way okay guys thanks very much